the Joe Rogan experience. There could be a bunch of things at play. Well, you there. didn't run when you met me, so no. I appreciate that. No, I mean, I, I know you. we're probably scheduled to do this interview, so you couldn't. But <coughs> I was looking forward to this. Why okay. would I run? <laughs> I mean, I was I was impressed by your intensity, but I expected that in a yeah. way. I mean, I just I don't Good. see how you could be a race car driver and not be intense, especially be a yeah. woman and a race car driver and not yeah. be intense. Well, that's nothing I even thought about until I was like fourteen. Um, for the first oh, few years of racing, <laughs> way late in life, I didn't even think about being a girl out there. It wasn't until I had cameras following me around my schools and stuff that I was like, "All right, maybe this is." And then they start asking you about it. They're like, "What's it like to be a girl?" You're like, "Shit, I never really, I don't know, really, I haven't really thought about that." Um, How many other girls do it? I mean, there are various girls here and there, but you know, like in all of NASCAR, how many women are, ri- are racing? Oh, um, at my level, no, yes, zero. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh. Huh. That's pretty crazy. I don't know. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm just crazy. used to it. Well, take it from me. I'm when on the outside. When people ask me, what's it like to be a girl in racing? I'm like, uh, well, I don't really know what it's like to be a guy. So, you know, I only have my perspective. That's true. You know, I mean, right. I don't know. Like being a girl versus a guy. What's the difference? I don't know. What's right. it like to be a guy? Uh, yeah, it'd probably be different. But I think that, like, what's it like to be a woman that's the only woman Who's in NASCAR mm-hmm. at your level? That's mm-hmm. that's a valid question. I mean, that's mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. How do, how does everybody else treat you? Yeah, that 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 really mm-hmm. is the the main question I can't answer because I I'm not them, and I right. I know that um, from from e- enough experience now because I used to not really look into it much. And in in the IndyCar days, you couldn't hit each other. You know, you really I mean, it was you know you could block and things like that. So there were some guys out there that were assholes, and I didn't like them. But you know. Sometimes every driver has some dri- some other drivers that they don't really get along with, and so. But in NASCAR, you can hit each other, and it's you have bumpers, and um, which is really cool. But it also isn't cool because if somebody wants to do it, they can. So, what would I say? I would say that they don't want to get passed by a girl. And you know what? I don't either. Is that weird? No. I really don't. I mean, I've driven, I've raced with girls, and I don't. I don't like it. So do you <laughs> do you feel differently when a guy passes you than when a girl passes you? Probably. Yes. Yeah? Yes. In what way? Well, you do know, you go, it's, Do you it's, just go internally, that bitch? I'm like, I can't believe my car isn't faster right now. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this sucks. But if it's a guy that passes you, <laughs> But then you, there are other cars that are not good that I'm like, you know, come on the radio and I'll be like, uh, yeah, I just want you to see that what car passed me and how bad my car is out now right now. Um, so it happens with guys, too. But, you know, I don't know. It's just a cultural norm that girls aren't good and a lot, you know, aren't very good and that they they um, somewhat don't belong. And I get like the little bit of animosity at first, but I would have thought that people would have got got used to it a little bit more than they did. So, but you have that cultural animosity. You were saying a little bit, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah and I don't know where it comes from. But when you say that it's a it's a cultural norm that girls aren't good, you don't think about that about yourself. No. Yeah. See, I knew that. No. <laughs> There's you don't have any doubts. No, I look right. at everyone out there. I'm like, you suck because of this, and I'm gonna beat you because of that, and right. oh god, I hate you. You and, don't you know. think because I'm a girl, I'm not as good as them. No, not at all. So why would you think that about the other girl? I don't know. I just it's cuz I'm not used to it, right? You just <coughs> something you're not used to. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Well, also it's like you're unique. I mean, what so, if you were out there in the gym and some girl comes and picks up more weight than you and you're like, "Huh, oh, that's weird." I'd be like, "That bitch is on roids." <laughs> she's gotta be. She probably would be, well, she's but she's some Amazon. <laughs> some freak, some genetic freak. I'd try to sign her. I just yeah. I'd bring her to the UFC. Yeah, I'd be no like, Listen, kidding. Do you not throw a punch? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't know. I think um I think we all have uh, cultural prejudices, you yeah, know, to just, a certain extent, whether we admit it or yeah, not. And yeah. you know, maybe you're not uh, a bigot. Maybe you're just maybe you just have reservations, and you're pleasantly surprised when people surpass yeah. those ex- expectations. Yeah, you know. But I would think that uh, you would experience probably more discrimination as a woman uh, than, I mean, if you think about a woman doing almost any other job, like. If you're telling me you're the only woman that does that Mm -hmm. and you're at this intense macho job, (laughs) this is a fucking intense job. I mean, Mm -hmm. you're going 200 miles an hour. Everybody's it's nuts. That's a crazy job. And you're out there at the top of the food chain with all these men. Yeah, I would I would imagine there's two things that happen. There's a bunch of guys that treat you with respect. Mm hmm. 
they're, they're like, wow. They're cool. like impressed. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're cool with you. They're yep. like, she's one of us. That's right. And then there's a few that mm-hmm. are just dicks. Mm-hmm. And the, those dicks are just incorrigible. Mm. <laughs> Man, the amount of times I wish I was good at taking people out. I wish people knew how hard it was to actually take someone out on track. It's not that easy. You would because you can risk your, risk taking yourself. yourself. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And if your car doesn't handle very well, you can't get close enough to them. If you could, you would just move the air, which is almost like hitting them, and get them out of the way. But sometimes the car doesn't handle well enough. So like you'd have to just bomb in there and. God willing, you hit them to get you to slow down, and then they go sailing, and you keep going. But it's risk. That's a rare moment, right? Yeah. Have you done yeah. that before? Oh, I've tried to take people. I suck at it. I absolutely <laughs> suck at it. I have taken myself out like three times trying to do it. Uh, I mean, look, I'll be the lamb. I don't mind to make a point. Um, so yeah, you do I, that to make a point if someone's driving like a dick? Yeah. Look at you. You're like, yeah. Oh yeah. There was a. What was the one that was the most sad? Was um. Uh, it was a couple of years ago, it was at Martinsville, and this is when something was going down with, it was Matt Kenseth and Joey Logano, and it was during the chase, which is the last 10 races of the season, and they were in the chase, Matt and Joey, and um, Joey had made it so that Matt couldn't get in because he took him out a week earlier, a week or two earlier, and then they got to Martinsville, and it's a very, very small short track, it's just a half a mile, and so um, it it's easy to kind of be able to attack if you want to. And so he just straight took him out. And um, there was a whole big hoopla about it. People up in arms thought it was totally unfair. And um, anyway, during the same race, some asshole hits me, takes spins me out. And so I come back and I'm a lap down or something because he spins me out. And I go to take him out and I just sail off into the corner. He manages to kind of keep going. I spin again because I'm horrible at it. And uh, turns out that, you know, I get a $50,000 fine because I am um, I'm not racing for position because I was a lap down. Um, and they applied that because that was also the same race that Matt and Joey had their big thing. And I think maybe Joey was leading or something like that. I think he was leading and it was on a restart. Um, so they weren't racing for position either. So that was kind of like their rule that they put forth to make for I mean jo- Matt probably got a hundred or two hundred thousand dollar fine but um, there I am you know not the I'm definitely screwed in this scenario so I got fined 50 grand for it and I'm the one that's out so if you're other guy. if you're racing for a position then it's okay to bump into each other apparently yeah so really you're the one that's screwed because if you're racing if someone takes you out and then you're still racing for a position now you're gonna have to be potentially uh, you know, putting yourself in another position to get taken out when they started it. Hmm. It's a no win for the person that's being aggressed by the aggressor. Aggressed. <laughs> Was it always legal to bump into each other? Uh, it's gone kind of through waves of different rules, but yeah, I mean, it is legal. But when, whenever a big accident happens and there's a tragedy, I would mm. assume that that's when they tighten down the rules. Mm. Eh, sometimes. Sometimes not. Sometimes, sometimes they just not. accept that sometimes it's part. Sometimes it just happens. Sometimes it's just usually if there's something like that that happens, it's not from one person's action. That it's maybe a chain of events that right. leads to something like that. It's one of the rare jobs that you do that's a sport, uh, one of the rare sports where the potential for death is always there. Yeah, that's true. It is true. Is that one of the reasons why you decided like enough I is enough? I am not a daredevil. Like, I am not a daredevil. I went bungee jumping, and that is the bravest thing I've ever done otherwise. And I only did it because I'm afraid of heights, so I just needed to know that if I had to conquer a fear, I could. Well, what's your definition of a daredevil? You're a, you're a race car driver. To do things where you could potentially get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, though. That's true. Yeah, but you're a race car driver. I know, but I'm a methodical driver. I'm methodical. Oh. I don't go out there and just, you know hold it wide open until the car does something, and then I'm like, oh, better lift now. I'm like a methodical driver, so I build up. Well, I think what you're saying is you're not stupid. Ah, uh, thank but you, you're Joe. Definitely, That's very nice of you. That's like a really, really nice way to say that. Yeah, you're not dumb, but you're definitely a daredevil. Thank you. Well, I mean, You have to be. I'm not. There's no way you could not be. I'm just not. I'm serious. You, you drive you have, 200 miles an hour Anybody that really knows me knows that I'm not brave. Oh, wow, that's so crazy. I know. It's, I, I, th- I think you're talking crazy. A crazy talk over <laughs> here. Well, you know, I mean, it's true. I, I just have been grooming this talent since I was 10, and 26 years later, I'm, I'm okay with it. I think it, it's both of those things, but I think there's no doubt that you're a brave person. There's no, there's Actually, no, my first time in a go-kart was horrible. 
What were you, three? Ten. <laughs> Ten. And my sister was eight. My dad <coughs> built the go-karts. There was a big parking lot out back. So we got, like, spray cans, WD-4, whatever. Pop cans, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, I grew up in the Midwest, so pop. Um, and set them up in a big circle for my sister and I to go out and drive around and drive our go-karts for the first time. And... Um, my dad made there was a little mistake with the brake pedal and so it stopped working and um since i'm 10 and i'm really young and dumb and i don't know what i'm doing young dumb and broke i guess i was yeah like the song goes um but i uh, i went to hit the brake it wasn't there so instead of just spinning out or continuing to turn i just went straight and i was headed for um a trailer like kind of a higher elevated trailer, which would have resulted in decapitation. And I swerved at the last second and hit a concrete wall. And I like go flying and my arm lays back on the on the muffler and my cool puffy jacket burns. And like I bruises all up my legs and on my arms. And uh, that was my first time in a go-kart within, you know, five or ten minutes of being out there. And so um, my dad just got a new one and built it and we went racing. So maybe I am really brave. I don't know. You're right. Maybe it's... I always felt like an indie car. To some degree, I wasn't brave because people were willing to do things that were well, perceivably more brave. But I also I did describe them as dumb. You're right. Yeah. So I, I you're probably a little right, and I'm maybe a little right too. But you're right. I yeah. think you're definitely brave. But I think there's definitely a line where bravery becomes stupid because the risk outweighs the reward. One hundred percent.